we were just over in Alexandria a little while ago, and I'm here to tell you that uh, they laid down the gauntlet over there. I heard a number of people say that we are going to outperform Arlington. Oh, no, 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 no. Tell you what I hear. I'm, 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 just, I'm just the delivery person, okay, buddy? So I think the gauntlet has been laid down. But I'll tell you what else I'm seeing around this state. And I'll tell you, I'm seeing this around the country. I am seeing unbelievable energy. Woo! And you know, uh, Sue, who is one of my favorite people, and we need to give it up for her. Because yeah! She said something that is correct, and that is you have elections every year. But I would respectfully submit to you that you have never had an opportunity like we have right now. Yeah. Because you know what, folks? This is not simply an election between Ralph Northam and Ed Gillespie. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> this is not simply an election to elect Justin Fairfax and re-elect Mark Harris. America straight again. <laughs> It's feeling a lot like 2005 to me. Because in 2005, we had a very unpopular far-right president pursuing a very unpopular legislative agenda with a very unpopular far-right Congress. And you know what happened in 2005? That was the last time that Democratic candidates for governor in both New Jersey and Virginia won the race. 2005 was the last time. 2017 is the next time. That's all I do. And I'm here to tell you that the new Democratic National Committee is all in. And we're not simply all in for Ralph Northam. The mission statement of the new Democratic Party is we're here to not simply elect the President of the United States, we're here to help elect people from the school board to the Senate and everywhere in between. That's why I've had telephone conversations with roughly 30 of your House candidates, because I'm here to tell them we're all in. We want to make sure that Ralph not only wins, but that Ralph governs. Virginians, we need a majority in the House and a majority in the Senate, and we're going to get it. Yeah. If we want to make sure that health care for all is a reality in Virginia, we need a majority in the House, and we need a majority in the Senate, and we're going to get it. We're going to get it by working together. Because Alfonso and his colleagues, they are spectacular. But they need more help, and that's what we're going to do. I have had the remarkable privilege of getting to know Ralph, and as I have said a number of times, the best way to predict future conduct and future actions is to look at their past actions. Ralph's entire life has been a life of service. His DNA is about helping people about building a Virginia that works for everybody, about expanding access to health care, about making sure that everybody has the opportunity to punch their ticket to the middle class. Ralph understands, as my parents taught me, that education is the great equalizer. When we expand apprenticeship, when we expand access to affordable higher education, we expand those ladders to the middle class for everyone. Ralph understands that nuestra universidad is nuestra fuerza. That our diversity is our strength. It's what makes America great, and it's what makes Virginia great. Now, as I said a minute ago, past can determine future conduct. You look at Eddie Gillespie and what he's been all about. He's been about service as well. Service to the Koch brothers. Service to the pharmaceutical. Centers, service to make sure that we don't have quality public education. He's a big fan of our current Secretary of Education. We need a Secretary of Education who actually 
actually believes in public education. He's been fighting the battles on behalf of the rich class and against working families day in and day out. We don't need to think about it. We just need to look at his actions. And then you look at the aftermath of Charlottesville. You look at the aftermath of the debate on the Affordable Care Act repeal. Both of those issues are moral issues. And in both of those issues, he failed the test of governance. Because you know what? If you can't speak out against hate, what can you speak out against? And his mouth was in his mouth. struggling with opioid addiction and tell them, well, I'm still studying the proposal of the Trump administration to eliminate access to Medicaid expansion. That is lousy leadership on a good day. And that is why we need Ralph. But we need to go further. As the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, I worked so hard. And in partnership with Attorneys General. And you know what? When we had good ones, the sky was the limit. And when we had lousy ones, it spelled trouble. I spent a lot of time in Texas because Texas is a full employment act for civil rights lawyers. And you know what? Thank God for Mark Herring. Because Mark Herring has been such a stalwart in protecting the fundamental rights of Virginians. And you know what? I have known the Fairfax family for 20 years. Justin Fairfax has got game, my friends. And he is going to lead you in a remarkable way. So he's got to get out there, folks. And that's why the DNC has been all in. We made a seven-figure seven, seven commitment early on. And you know what? We got organizers on the ground. We're not only helping Ralph, but as I said to Ralph, we want to help you win and we want to help you govern. So we got organizers out there in those very important house districts so that we can double and triple dip, get out there and talk to people. And you know what? This is a spectacularly nice day today for Labor Day. But we know in the 64 days that lie ahead, there's going to be a lot of sweaty days. And there's going to be a lot of temptation to say it's too darn hot to knock on doors. But you know what, folks? It's never too hot to knock on doors when the stakes are what they are right now. Because the stakes for dreamers are too high. The stakes for healthy families are too high. On this Labor Day, we have a president presiding over efforts to eviscerate collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is what brought us the middle class in this country. We should be expanding, expanding, and eviscerating collective bargaining. And that's what we're fighting for, folks. You have a unique opportunity because the nation is watching what's happening in New Jersey and what's happening in Virginia. And we can send that very clear message the first Tuesday in November that somos los Estados Unidos, no somos los Estados Divididos. We are the United States of America, not the divided States of America. Because those 800,000 dreamers, they aren't simply a group of people who are remarkably resilient looking for the American dream. They are a damn good value statement about who we are as a nation. We're a nation of dreamers. We should be supporting them. This, this election, it is a moral imperative that we get out there and work hard. It is an economic imperative that we get out there and work hard. It is a national security imperative yes. that we get out there and usher in the defeat of Donald Trump. Steady hands are what we need yes. when we are dealing with the likes of North Korea. Not trigger finger, Twitter finger people. That's not what we need. And it starts right here. That's why you are in an enviable position. And that's why I'm so excited to see young people who are out there. I bet you you're 18 years old, <laughs> more or less. 
<laughs> He's honest. I love that. <laughs> and you know what, folks? When we get out there, you know, history has its eyes on us right now. Yeah. I do a lot of international travel, and everywhere I go, people are saying, what's happening? What's happening to the moral leadership of the United States of America? And, and, and I think on November, in November of this year, we have this dramatic opportunity. Yeah. And that's why we need you to work harder than ever before. Because the challenge for us is to translate this moment of energy. And I come to you with sobriety but also with unbridled optimism. Because the United States of America remains better positioned than any nation on the planet to lead for the next century and beyond. But we lead and we're at our best when we're putting our values out there. And that's what I need you to do the next 64 days. Tell the voters, I am a proud Democrat. I support Ralph Northam because he supports the labor movement. He he supports immigrant rights. He supports public education. He wants a Virginia that works for everyone. He wants to unite us, not divide us. And we have a person in Eddie Gillespie who wants to be Donald Trump's lobbyist in Virginia. We don't need that in Virginia. We don't need that in America. So let's work together to build a Virginia that works for everyone. And then you, when the history books right, about the demise of Donald Trump. They will write the chapter about Virginia and how the momentum started here and the momentum started in New Jersey and the momentum carried us all the way across America with our majority in the House and our majority coming up in 2019 in the Senate. And then we redistrict in a fair way so that everybody has a fair shake. In this 13 year election, that's what it is. It's a 13 year election. We vote. When we vote, we win, folks. Cuando votamos, ganamos. Cuando votamos, ganamos. Nuestro voto es nuestra voz. Vamos a ganar. <laughs>